a periodic function is a function that repeats itself. So if I look at my circular function here, every time I go around once, that it repeats and it keeps on repeating. So in other words, my domain is infinite, but my range is limited. In this case, notice it goes from negative one to one. So every time I come back to the same point, that's one period. Now, not everything what we do has to do with trig functions is just trig functions. We can have a periodic function like we have down below where we can see it's repeating. That, that function, that period, is what the distance between two parts that are exactly the same on the graph. So that is when your graph starts to repeat, that distance is what our period is. It doesn't have to be the peak. It could be the valley. So if I, I go from this point to this point, that's one period because it starts repeating. I go up and down and then I start going up again. I could pick points in the middle. If I go, I'm going halfway up to going halfway up, there is one period. Let's apply that to a problem here. I want to determine the period of this function. So if I look at this function, it starts here. I can do this period in a couple different ways. I'm going to start here at zero. And I'm going to look at when does this repeat again? Well, notice what happens to my graph here. It goes up, it goes down, and then right here, here's my period. So I'm going to look at the distance from zero to pi over three. So in other words, my, my period is going to be pi over three minus zero. Now, I picked the zero because that's a nice one to work with, but I can pick any point. Let me change colors here and see the difference here. Let's, uh, let's do a place on the x-axis. So here I'm at pi over six. Pi over six, notice on my graph, this is the point where it's going down. So I find the appropriate place where it's going down again, and that is pi over two, isn't it? So my period is going to be the distance between pi over two and pi over six. Well, to find that distance, I'll just subtract. Well, remember, in order to subtract, you have to have the same denominator. So my denominator is six. So my second fraction stays alone. Notice I have to multiply by three in my first fraction. So I get three pi minus pi over six, which is two pi over six, which is pi over three. I just noticed my first one, I never wrote down the actual answer. So no matter where you do it, that's your period. That's how you get pi over three.